No, I've been really, really good. I mean, our off season wasn't long, which is which has got its advantages as well. Um, that you don't have to sort of start from scratch as much. Um, but they've trained really well, um, done some different things with their conditioning. Uh, we were able to jump back into match practice pretty quickly. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've moved along quite well. One of the big changes from last season to this year is the girls are getting a lot more money to play. Yeah. So they don't yeah. have to put so much balance to their other jobs and balance you know, other things. They can focus a bit more on training. Have you seen that? Um, well, I've seen it across all of them. So, not not there's there's not a group of haves and have-nots as far as their conditioning time has allowed them to um, become better. But we are in a tricky phase now, where where some at the top end are now starting to think I'm a full-time athlete. Um, even the 18-year-olds that are on um, decent money now, they've they've decided that they can focus fully on footy. Um, so we're in a tricky spot of in between of, of some people still needing to work. Um, not complaining about it, that's for sure. It's a, it's a great step forward, um, but we're not quite full time yet in terms of having the whole group being able to come at whatever time of the day you like. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, just the. Um, I mean, they've always devoted a lot of time, and, and that, that was probably... The th I, I haven't seen a huge shift in how much time I'm devoting to my sport, to be honest. It's, it's sort of rolled... It's an incremental gain, I guess, but it's, it's not been hugely noticeable. However, if you go back to the last two seasons, they were putting all that work in for not much reward. So, you know, the, the fact... It's basically the, the, the monetary side of things is caught up with their commitment. Yeah, well, three years ago we we uh, got demolished in the first round of um, expansion. This this time around we've been able to retain 28. Um, the three that we um, had to let go have all ended up on the list as well. So I think I think it's about the first time ever in AFLW history that everyone from your list from the previous year is now on another another team's list. So we're we're sort of reasonably proud of that. But keeping 28 um, puts us in a really nice position coming into this one. Having all 18 teams in the comps, great as well. Um, so yeah, the, the league feels like it's pretty complete now. That photo they did a couple of weeks ago was was a beauty with the AFL, with all the men's players and all the all the women's players in the one place at the one time. So it actually puts us in a, a fantastically strong position as a sport. And you know, I've lived in Queensland now for well over 20 years. I know how tough the market is. And um, us as a sport, we're, we're in a really good position now to say that we're right up there as one of the strongest codes in Queensland. So how do you think the um, depth will be? Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah, it's it's people assume that there's this lack of depth of talent through AFLW because our league's six years old. But you've got to remember the talent pathway's been going for well over a decade. So. What you've got now is a whole lot of kids who watched AFL season one as 12 and 13 year olds have always aspired through their teenage years to say that's where I want to be, that's where I want to go. Now it's a viable career option and those kids, and there's a lot of them uh, coming through and you'll, you don't know their names yet, that's the only problem. So once they get established and get playing then you'll understand, yeah, that, that, that group of kids that have been playing for at high level for five, six years as underage players are now household names in our comp. You're surprised. You mentioned your ability to retain the girls. Were you surprised that so many of them stayed? I mean, some of your comments at the end of last season, there was almost a wariness that you were afraid that it would happen again, that other teams would come because the Lions have been on the top for so long. Yeah. Were you surprised that so many girls wanted to stay because of the culture that you to get on? Um, not pleasantly surprised, although not not overly surprised, because they've got this great camaraderie amongst them. Uh, they know they're in a successful team at the moment. Um, you know, they're, they're happy with the fact that we've been pretty stable as a coaching group as well. Uh, we've got a, an amazing facility we're about to move into. So there's a lot of things there that, you know, they're sort of thinking, yeah, okay, I can go for a little bit more, but what we've got here is pretty good. So that bit... Mind you, what was being offered was like mind blowing. So it was, you know, we're, we're going to be in for a fight here. But the fact they chose all those other things uh, without the dollar sign attached to it 
sort of shows what type of people are that they are and, and how they value um, the, the, the feel around our team, I guess. So that's just one of the big ones. Some of the money, Sorry, Batesy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the money I heard yeah. clubs were offering yeah. was, was pretty... Yeah. A lot of money for a, a woman who hasn't really got that sort of money to play football before. No. And she decided to stay that season. Yeah, well, mind you, she's worth it. Yeah. She's, she's the women's Brownlow medalist. Um, so that elevates you, you know, right up the charts. I mean, she's had a particularly good year, but there are a number of others in our group that have assisted her with that. You know, we're, the, the thing about our group has always been very, very even. But nominally the best player in the competition right now to be offered something that's like boys' money, what's wrong with that? That's, that's exactly where we should be and all power to her. So uh, I'm, I'm just really glad that um, our footy club was able to to match or get close to what was being thrown at her from other from other parties because Bates is a rusted on Brisbane girl. She's played all the footy at Yeronga Footy Club, uh, was you know our first pick in the very first draft. Uh, so we need to keep people like that in our team. There was others though, stars as well that mm. were chased. Quite a big sacrifice. I think what the guys are getting at is that when you're working from a small base of money, getting those offers mm. must be really tempting and a quite a big sacrifice. Financially, at least at this stage of their career. Yeah, absolutely. There, were, there was elements of relief from my perspective once it was over, and then, then this wave of guilt washed over me as well. It's like, you know, have we, have we, you know, in, in, in whatever way, keeping the group together, have we denied these people the opportunity of, of, of earning way more than uh, what we've, we've been able to retain them for? But we think, um, in footy economics terms, if you hang around us for long enough, uh, you'll be rewarded in the long term because we, you'll be in a strong team. Uh, you'll gradually keep creep up the pay scale as some of our older players retire and so forth. Um, so that's that's basically what we sort of presented to them. It's made me feel a little bit better about the whole thing. I've got to say because um, it was like, geez, you know, this is really this is tricky. Like you really want to see these girls who have given everything to their sport actually earn what's been thrown at them but you also want them to stay here and, and have more success with us. So a very, very tricky one to sort of manage uh, emotionally a bit, a, a bit. Must be very, I was just gonna say, you must be confident about success this year. You've got the continuity, some other clubs have been diluted a little bit. You're already at the pointy end of the competition. Like, yeah. how far do you expect it to go this year? Oh, I mean, you know, it's like, we're always wary, always, um, hoping what you're seeing on the track is good enough. Um, the only proof really I have at this time of the year is things like time trials and their application to training and the, the chatter amongst the group as to, you know, this is what I'm watching, this is what I'm reading, this is what I'm, um, you know, try, trying to make myself better. All those sort of bits and pieces that you, you want from a, a group that's trying to push themselves and try and get better. So that's been there and it's been really positive. We had a, uh, a game sim session against the Suns the other night down the coast and that was very positive as well. Uh, we go to Melbourne to play St Kilda on Friday, so, you know, j just all those little experiences starting to stack up as to, okay, where are we? But you'll never know until round one comes around, so, yeah, I'm quietly confident, but you never know. Mm. Yeah, hopefully. Let's have this chat again in about five weeks, shall we? <laughs> so, and find out where we're at. I, you never know, honestly. Like, you think that you're tracking okay, but you never know until you play. What, so, what chance is Kate Lupton to play this year? Uh, pretty good chance, actually. Yeah, so I'll have to get you guys out to training to have a look and, and see what you think. So I'm not going to give you too much. But come and have a look, see how she's going uh, in, in match practice and those sorts of things. Um, it's it's at the hopeful end more than the definite end. Um, but geez, Kate coming back into the team at the back end of the year, if it were to happen, is a huge plus for us. But she was gone in the first three minutes earlier this year of the season, and then Nat Grider pops up and she's all Australian. So some you know one person dropping out is another person's person's opportunity to excel. So um, Nat certainly did that as a defender. Is she the, I guess the cherry on top of the premiership run? 
Yeah. And she obviously made a leader around the club for a long time, all the stuff she did last year yeah. while she was injured. Yeah. Um, she could do that. Right yeah, you're right, Mark. And, so, and since then, she's played three minutes of AFLW. So it's it's been a long time since she's got on the footy field. Uh, she's a little bit older. She's got married. So there's a few things that have happened in the meantime. But um, she is a competitor um, right at the elite end of uh, competitiveness. So um, I'd be surprised if she didn't make an impact if she were to play. But we don't even know if she's going to get out there yet. When I talked to her last year, when Mm. Playing that game so badly. Yeah. Um, well, she's from out there. She's from Ipswich. Yeah. yeah. So that exactly. that that's sort of. Been yeah. That yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it sounds like that might be a final. If you get a home final, that might be the time the first game. Is that you know? Is that this big excitement build for that place and, and, and you know and have that home ground that you have been able to have because the new season date has kind of screwed up the plans with that thing. Yeah, and all the rain we've had the last six months hasn't helped either. Like, the in, we, we were there yesterday. The inside of the building is amazing and just about ready to go. So that part's okay. There's no grass on the oval yet. Uh, however, all the foundations have been done there as well. So it could be a week or two away before uh, the grass goes down. But yeah, getting out there and playing at the back end of the year would be nice. But, you know, we'll see what happens.